<laughs> Hello. I should let you know, I'm about to do a coding challenge. You're gonna watch this apparently. And I have been live streaming for uh, three and a half hours. So I apologies in advance. But I, I'm excited to do this. I really wanted to try this for a while. It's been suggested, uh, suggested many times. I am going to visualize a sorting algorithm. And I'm going to start with the bubble sort, one of the most basic sorting algorithms of them all. And I might just do a follow-up one with like a selection sort and then a quick sort and other sorts. So you suggest all your fancy sorting algorithms in the comments below. Um, but this is inspired by many things, but uh, most notably probably this article called Visualizing Algorithms by Mike Bostock. Uh, this is actually uh, an article from 2014. It has a wonderful set of interactive explanations of different algorithms. I'm going to search for sorting. Um, and, uh, well, that's the shuffling one. Sorry. I'm going to search for shorting, sorting. Ah, right here. So this is visualizing the quick sort algorithm. I like that what's happening in this is that it's sorting all these lines by their angle. So I think there's a lot of really unique and interesting visual possibilities that you could visualize data and then sort it and visualize that sorting process. Maybe you could sort like musical notes or maybe you could sort text. There's so many possibilities. So I encourage you to be creative with your own visual interpretation of what I'm going to do and share it with me. I'm gonna do this in processing my happy place. Thank you very much. I will make a JavaScript version of it as well uh, with the P5.js library, so you can find the code for both of those things linked below. Okay, so let's just talk about what a bubble sort is first. And then, you know, of course, by the way, you, if you watch any of my video tutorials, you know, I talk about bubbles a lot, so this is kind of appropriate. So let's say we have a list of numbers, and that list of numbers is in an array. So there is an array of one, two, three, four, five, six things. And there are numbers like six, two, nine, seven, three, four. What a bubble sort does is it starts by just comparing pairs of numbers. So we start at the beginning and we compare these two numbers. And let's say I want the I want the list to be from smallest to largest. I could want it from largest to smallest, or I could be comparing the values in any number of ways. But if I want from smallest to largest, looking at these two values, I should switch them. So what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't have to draw this a lot. I swap them. I perform a swap. 2, 6, 9, 7, 3, 4. Now I look at these two values. Wait, this one's bigger than that one. I don't need to swap. Ah! Now I'm going to look at these two values. I do need to swap them. 7, 9, 3, 4, 2, 6. Now I look at these two values. Up oh, 9 is bigger. 2, 6, 7, 3, 9, 4. Okay, now I look at the last two values. 9 is bigger. 2, 6, 7, 3, 4, 9. Now look at this. The largest value is always going to end up in the last spot. So I'm now done all the way up to the last spot. So I could do the same exact checking the pairs of values but just do them one at a time all the way up to the last spot. So this bubble sort is probably the least efficient sorting algorithm. In fact, it is a n squared, a big O notation, big O notation about the order of an algorithm. How long does it take for an algorithm to, to perform, right? If I have six, um, an array of six things, I've got to do how many swaps? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And then I have to do one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. So as the array gets bigger, the amount of swaps I need to check grows exponentially. So this is a slow algorithm, but I don't care about that because I want to visualize it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we need some way of visually representing the array. So I'm going to say void setup, void draw, um, I'm going to make an array. I'm going to make a window of size 600, 600. I'm going to set the background to zero. I am going to create an array of values. And that's going to be an array. I want to have the same number of values that I have as pixels. So I'll say width. And then I want each, I want to, uh, loop over that entire array and I want to say values index i equals random height. So I want to get a random number from 0 to the height of the window because I'm going to visualize that. Uh, I'm going to visualize it now by saying uh, 4 int i equals 0, i is less than values dot length, 
I++, I'm going to draw a line from the bottom of the window, 0 comma height, oh sorry, I comma height, to I comma height minus values index I. So I'm going to draw a line uh, with that random number, and then I'm going to run it. Oh, maybe I need to set the stroke of the line to be 255. And there we go. So this is what I want to sort. This looks kind of weird. Let's make it, I, I think I want a different aspect ratio. Let's make it like um, 800 by 500 or something. Okay, that's better. So this is what I want to sort. I want to sort all of these so we see the smallest one on the left and the largest one on the right. And I want to watch the sorting process happen in real time. All right, let's think about this. So first let's program that sorting algorithm. Like let's just, let's just do the sort right here. First of all, processing, I'm pretty sure, has built into it a function called sort. Ta-da! I sorted it. Good night. Thank you very much. See you later. No. So I need to write the sorting algorithm myself. Um, so let's do that first. So the first thing I need to do is I need to have i equals 0, i is less than the values.length. So I need to, what I'm going to do is for every single, for the amount of things in the array, I now need to check for int j equals zero, j is less than values dot length minus i j plus plus. Think about that. The first, uh, the first time I go through, I have to do every single swap. The second time I go through, I have to do every single swap up until one less. So then two less, then three less. So as i goes up, I check fewer, I, I check i less elements in the array. All right. So now for each one of these things, I'm going to check, um, I'm going to check. So I, I, I'm going to get uh, value a is values index j and, and value b is values index j plus one. And then I'm going to say if A is greater than B, then I need to swap a J and J plus 1. So this is a function that I intend to write, a function called swap, which gets the values and two indices and swaps the values in that array. I'm putting that in a separate function because it's a very common algorithm to swap two values in an array and I might as well encapsulate that somewhere. Encapsulate is probably the wrong word. I might as well farm that off to another function. Now, the thing is, I think this actually should go to minus i minus one because technically when I'm checking the last element, I am checking the last element against the element before. Like the last element has no neighbor to its right. So I, I actually should go minus one here. So then I am going to perf uh, write this swap function. I'm just going to put it at the bottom. Swap this is a generic function that gets any sort of array and an index, an index i and an index uh, j. And what it does is the idea is what I want to say is a index i equals the spot that j has, and j, this is swapping the values, right? Maybe I should make these a and b, it might be a little bit more clear. a should get b's value, and b should get a's value, right? That's swapping it. If you haven't seen this before, think about what's wrong here. What's wrong here? a should get b's value, b should get a's value. That's conceptually correct, but guess what? If b gets a's value, a just got b's value, so b is getting b's value. Ah. So really what we need to do is temporarily store a's value, give a's b value, but don't worry, we've saved a's value in temp and now. So this is actually swapping those two values. Okay, here we go. And now if I run this, ha ha! Yes, so this sorted. So great, I sorted everything with a bubble sort right up here in the top. But now I want to animate this. I want to just do one of these every frame. So now I need to think about the draw loop. Basically, I need i and j to become global variables, right? The idea is here, I want to do one of these each time through draw. I want to basically do this, do this once, and then I want the loops to just sort of happen somehow 
outside, like I gotta like do those manually. So I gotta say int i starts at zero, j starts at zero, right? And so now, after I do this, I do this first with i as zero and j as zero, then what? j goes up. j equals j plus one. Now, now if j gets to the end, right, j, j's limit was values.length minus i minus one. So if j is greater than or equal to values.length minus i minus one, then what happens? j goes back to zero and i equals i plus one, right? So this is basically doing one step of the loop each time through draw. j goes up always, and when j gets to the end, it goes back to zero and i goes up, and then j is gonna go through all of that again. I think that's the right idea. Now, however, I do need an end condition, right? Because at some point, I only wanna do this if i is less than values.length. As soon as i becomes values.length, I wanna stop doing this entirely, and I can also, I can do something like it's finished, so I could say like print line finished, and I could say no loop. Dare I say that this challenge might actually be complete? <laughs> be shocked. Oh my goodness. Shortest challenge ever. I love it. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, whoops. <laughs> ah, I think I did everything correctly, but I just put this inside here. The whole point is do that, and when you're done, then say print line finished and no loop, right? It, do all this stuff, the incrementing through the sorting, and then when I'm done, say that. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> breathe, everybody, let's breathe. Here we go, here we go. Oh, it's sorting, look. Look at that, look at that one line. It's just traveling across, high over there. Oh boy, this is gonna take a really long time. <laughs> do you, how much time do you have? Okay, never mind, never mind. I did some calculations and that was gonna take about uh, an hour and 10 minutes, 20 minutes, hour and a half, something like that to complete. So we're gonna, at number one is I could be like, oh, I know, let's just do like a little tiny 100 by, you know, 100 window. You know, oh, maybe we could sit here and actually watch this sort. So I do kind of like the idea that I'm seeing the, 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 that sort of like line going over time. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to need to speed things up. So let's, let's, let's do that. Um, let's go back. Let's not, let's not be as ambitious. Let's do 400 by 300. And then I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do this. I mean, I could do the full J each time, but then it's really like a selection sort, which is, I don't want to do. So I'm going to, uh, <laughs> this is a flawed idea. I'm just going to do like a hundred per frame. Uh, so I'm going to add, oh, I can't add it. I'm going to do, I'm going to call this N. I'm going to just like do this a hundred times per frame. Oh, you know what? The print line is something I really should take out here. I should, basically I'm making this a selection sort. By the way, spoiler alert, the next video I was going to make, I'm now basically making now. A selection sort is instead of swapping, bubbling through the whole uh, array, you just look through the whole array, find the biggest one, put it at the end. And look through it again, find the biggest one, and put it through the end. So I, I would have to write a slightly different algorithm to do that, but in essence, I'm gonna animate this as a selection sort by going here and just saying, um, just having i go up by one. So every frame I'm gonna say four, uh, I'm gonna take, oh, did I, I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna do all the J's. Oh, wait a second. No, 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 no. I made a big mistake here. If I'm gonna do it more than once, I gotta swap each time too. <laughs> so this should really, I don't know why I have this here. Um, this should have all along, boy, now I suddenly made this a long video <laughs> because of my incompetence. I should have had this all along, basically. Um, well, I like the idea of doing it first, but, um, in here. So hold on, just get, bear with me for a second. I'm going to leave this up here. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to do one I each time. Then for every J, 
I'm going to check the values. So I'm still doing the bubble sort, but I'm only going to update. And then every frame, I'm just going to say uh, I++. And then I have some extra brackets here that are totally unnecessary. All right, this should now visualize a little bit faster. Oh, that's kind of nice. <laughs> there we go. Mwah. Now let's make it uh, bigger. Let's make it full screen. Come on, everyone. So this is my basic sorting algorithm that is doing a bubble sort, but I'm only visualizing every way all the way through. So really, in the end, it's kind of like a selection sort visualization. You should do something like sort by color, sort by frequency of audio, sort by text, something else. And in fact, what if I use Perlin noise or like a sine wave? Uh, like what if I said uh, 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 noise of i divided by 100, this is using Perlin noise, times uh, height. This should be kind of interesting. Whoa, oh that's weird. Oh, because I used integers. Ah, because I didn't say 0, .0. that's kind of cool. Um, let me do this. This is what I meant to do. Yeah, look at this. So I had like this mountainous region that I'm now like kind of like sorting. This is actually kind of cool. Oh, this is more than just a selection sort because the other stuff is like swapping as well, I think. It's confusing to think. It's hard for me to think about this. Anyway, you get the point. <laughs> there are lots of possibilities here. Make your own beautiful version of this. Uh, think about the algorithm in a different way. Think about the data you're sorting in a different way. Put this on the web. Uh, share it with me. Sorting train, so, hashtag sorting train. On Twitter, hashtag sorting train. There'll be a link to the thecodingtrain.com webpage where you also can submit contributions. And I look forward to seeing what you make. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>